In this example of using paint, I'm going to make the green energy fly over the street of Tokyo. So I have it roughed in right now as this red line, this red triangle, and I want it to act like it's going through the sky. So I'm going to go back into the paint tool and switch it into that green glowing paint effect. So I'm going to select this. I'm going to switch the color over to green. Uh, it's feathered. Like that. Then copy. So Command C, Command V. We're going to take the copy and take down its feathering. We're going to change the color to yellow. And I'm just going to manually, oops, a bit much, isn't it? Uh, make it a bit smaller. All right, so there's the yellow and copy and paste. I'll do the white one. I'm just going to set it up over to the side so you can see it easier. Exactly the same technique as from the previous demonstration. The yellow is a little bit hard to see. If you tap on a shape up here and you use the fast forward and rewinds, it actually toggles between the different shapes that you've got. Uh, this is in contrast to if you were to tap down here on the track where the keyframes are. Fast forward and rewind would move you between the different keyframes. Uh, so up here, back to where I was, where this thing was set up kind of well enough. And we'll move all my shapes off at the same time to the top of the screen. Do it, undo, command A to select all. You can see that my green glow is not positioned well enough. Let's just make this better. Now my yellow one. This is the white one. This is the yellow one. I can tell because I'm looking over here at the color indicator. The yellow one has to be a little bit bigger. Not seeing enough of the yellow color. There's more yellow. Okay. So once again, tap in here, select all, go to the first keyframe, shove them up to the top, come to the last keyframe, bring them down to the bottom. I don't mind that there's green there because I'm going to use. Um, a key to cover that up after. So if I play it back, we get this very quick. I'm not sure that I actually like how the colors have matched up, but because there's so much green in that. I'm going to take my green down a little bit. And this is where you get into the really subjective part of it. Green down here, select both keyframes. All right, so let's try that. So I'm going to zoom back in, play it. That's the concept. A little bit tricky, though, because of this. Uh, I'm missing my mat. So I'm going to go ahead and add the mat, the extra key. So just take this clip, select it by pressing T so it marks it in and the outs. Press Alt-C so it copies it to the, uh, I should have just turned on the one track. Press Alt-C so it copies it to the source monitor, align it up to V3, and press B to overwrite it back in. So now I have the original shot up here. And I don't need to use an animat to cut at this shape like I did with the previous shot. Uh, because it's so bright, I can just use a Luma key, which keys out a certain amount of luminance. This is based on the fact that that's really, really bright. Let's draw on a Luma key. Go into the effect editor. I want to key out this. I think by default it's going to keep it in, but we can check. Uh, so now we'll just take a look. Move this over. Right now I'm looking at the foreground, and there's nothing on V2, and then my background's on top of it. So it looks perfect. It's not until I move it over until I get into the paint section, right after this guy walks by. 
So now the laser blast is coming in or the phaser or whatever it is. And I'm going to just tweak this shot. So I'm going to uh, invert the key. Nope, nope, the key was right. I do want the section. It's just including the luminance that's in the Samson sign on the side of this building sign. So if I take the gain back, it's going to restrict. And if you turn on show alpha, you can actually see that anything that's white is going to become transparent. So I'm going to see through it to the paint layer. Anything that's black is going to become opaque, and that's going to be kept from the layer three. So this is going to give me a better key. It doesn't look that. I'm actually letting this bleed a little bit because it's going to look neat. It's going to end up coloring just a little bit uh, these, this portion of the building and a little bit of the edge of the building there as though it is kind of casting some light. And just to soften the edges because they're so hard, I'll tap on the softness slider and then just use my cursor keys to move it over in one or two increments. You can really see how that's changing. The mat here, here it's hard, here it's a little bit softer. And if I go up to gain, I'm gonna pull it down to make it a little bit more refined like this. Turn off show alpha, my phaser blazer, phaser blast. And these two shots together. I feel like the end of that, you kind of see the shape of it. I should have tapered that off, but I'm glad I didn't. And maybe you can make it better. Um, over here, same kind of thing. I'm gonna take a laser blast and just fly it through. So another way to do that uh, really, really quickly is to mark this area off once again. So command click on the time code ruler. It selects the nearest edit. I'm going to add an edit. Uh, here. So now I've chopped it up. I'm going to take this paint effect and apply it to the section. So to do that, just open up the paint effect. There it is. Here it is in the effect editor. And just drag the icon to reapply it to somewhere else in the timeline, like there. So it's the same one. It's not going in the wrong direction, but I can just edit the keyframes and should be, or might be, fine. And so we'll see how that goes. Kind of like this. Tap up here, select all. First keyframe. I'm going to move it over here. I'm going to rotate it. Like this. And then what I'll do is just copy this keyframe, Command C. I'm going to paste it over here by tapping the last keyframe, pressing Command V. So now they're both identical. And then for the last keyframe where I am now, I'll just reposition it. That's easier than trying to make the second keyframe match the modified first one. It's going to go down the street like this. Maybe at the end, I'll give it a slight little rotation so it's moved just slightly. Progressed. And that gives me this. And then same kind of effect as we did before. I'm going to take the background. Cut a mask in it. Uh, this time we'll have to use Animat because there, there's no luminance or chrominance setting that I can realistically rely on here to get that to work. Um, like I was able to when I used my Luma key. So turn off all the tracks, select the bottommost clip, press T to mark it in and out, press Alt C to uh, copy it to the clipboard um, or to the source monitor. Uh, patch it, overwrite it back in with B, that's overwrite. There it is. Throw on a Animat. Here. And then I'm going to have to go cut this myself. Now, because the building is moving pretty fluidly, I can probably just use keyframes to make the mat move. Um, you can track those things if you want to, but this isn't really a tutorial on tracking, is it? So I'm going to open up my uh, animat. I'm on the first keyframe, which is true. And I wanted to kind of go down this street here. So I'm going to have to key out this. Now I want to go behind this building too. So not the bottom section, just this upper section. So 
you know, it's, it's these little small details, like right here, when it's going to shine through these two, that I think make it look really cool. And if you want it to go by. Fortunately, there's not a lot of motion in the shot. I mean, there is, it's, it's, but it's consistent motion, so it's going to be easy to keyframe this protective. Now, I'm just noticing that if it comes, when it gets here, it's going to be between this building and that, which is not true. I should have took the mat all the way up that way. So when you make screw ups like that, uh, just run with it. Let your mat finish. Then double tap inside your mat and uh, pull your control points over as needed. There, better. So that's that's frame one. On the last frame, the whole thing is moved. So I'm just gonna. Drag it down and hopefully snap it somewhat into place. Kind of like that. Double tap it, fix it up where it needed. Here I've just shift selected a couple, then they can all move together. Three over here. Using shift to select multiple control points, lining them up kind of like this. All right, so now my keyframe at the beginning, like that. Behind, looks good. So you could have gone through every frame there and tried to tweak the mask, but it actually is not that bad. Uh, with the exception that this is for a building that's already packed. Let's try to use that. Three. Okay. Now, uh, just like before, I'm going to select this, turn on anti-aliasing to get rid of any uh, diagonals, of which there are many. Diagonal jaggies. Um, maybe take feathering up by maybe one unit or so. And I should have done that with both keyframes selected. Otherwise, I'm animating my feathering. It's generally not true. Okay. Uh, if I play these back together, these three shots in a row. Yes. And that is one technique for making phaser blasts, light beams. Thanks again to Artbeats for providing the footage. Um, if you want to learn more about Animat and Paint, you can take Media Composer 205. That's Advanced Graphics and Compositing with Media Composer. If you want to take any courses from me, you can take them from Splice Training in Canada. SpliceTraining.ca. Uh, come up, go see some of the wilderness, and <laughs> take, a, take a course on Avid Editing. Or if you'd like, I can come to your facility and teach these courses for you and your coworkers. How fun would that be? Thanks again. This is Woody. Bye.